have I finally found the perfect brass sample library? We have a Flatus Chapter 2 Brass. After years of waiting, is it a worthy successor to one of the most iconic orchestral sample libraries out there? Or does it fall flat like a thin fart in the wind? It's an expensive sample library, so I have high expectations. Let's be clear, I expect four things from a Flatus Brass. One or inspiring ensembles for an instant film scoring sound that you wouldn't get in any other sample library. That's the philosophy about the Eflatus series, so it's a must for me. Two, a capable bread and butter library with consistent programming and articulations, something where Eflatus strings had some weaknesses in my opinion. Three, easy playability with great legatos and a simple workflow that doesn't waste my composing time. And four, Strato Sampling's realistic signature sound with lively and raw performances. Is it even possible to fulfill that? I don't know. Let's see what they came up with this time. Oh, subscribe to the channel if this is helpful. I'll give a like. And, you know, most of the channel are not subscribed. We have Bavarian Brass. Bavarian Brass, not Bavarian Brass. <laughs> a powerful patch for the lower range. Hunter brass with these gorgeous short notes and flams with a snare drum that can really add drive and a sort of military feel. I really like this. Iceberg brass for big drama. Imperial Brass A and B, which consists of trumpets plus horns and trumpets plus trombones playing in octaves. Very nice for fanfares and heroic stuff. We got some more mellow mountain hotels, both muted and normal and Noah Brass for that old school jazzy vibe. Phantom Brass is essentially a 10 horns patch, 4 on the left, 4 on the right, 2 on the balcony going through a Marshall guitar amp. Holy smokes, they really thought about the epic composers here. Thank you. Space Horror Brass is very dark and atmospheric, great for creating a brooding atmosphere. And we got those The Chosen One swells that everyone should immediately recognize from The Matrix. On top of those curated ensembles, we also have processed experimental patches, a dark ambient patch. David and Goliath. It lives among us. Mega Brass. And Military Brass. These curated ensembles, together with the experimental patches, are great inspiration candies for me. They cover many musical colors, come in multiple articulations that fit their mood, they feel powerful under my fingers, and are fun to play. 
good job on the inspirational side. Now I'm a sucker for these ensemble patches. I'm addicted to them. They are so much fun. So I would like to see more. Come on, give me more and I shall love you. Stresov announced that there will be a few more brand new patches in the 1.1 update. I am looking forward to it. Next, does Aflatus Brass do a better job at everyday composing than strings? Let's see. We have ensembles with trumpets, two and four French horn patches, trombones and tubers. There's a combined low brass ensemble too. Again, epic composers will appreciate this. Then of course there are the solo instruments, a trumpet, horn, trombone and tuba, just like with the ensembles, but also a bass trombone and a chimbasso. All ensemble and solo instruments have the usual articulations you would expect from a full brass library. Legato, flutter tongues, marcado, multiple shorts like staccato, staccatissimos and repetitions, but also a few more. And they also sampled one or two mutes per instrument. Set of sampling does polyphonic legato, and they do it well. You can play two melody lines at the same time, and it intelligently knows which voice fits which melody and applies the legato transitions. You just play and it works. It's intuitive. It's nice. If you want, you can switch it to mono legato here, or just sustains without any note transitions at all. The legato speed or the length of these legato transitions can be adjusted here for mono and poly legato. The legato itself sounds great and I'm confident that I can play all sorts of melodies with it. Aflatus has a wild dynamic range. Both the long notes and the shorts go from really quiet to really, really loud. The low dynamics are round, silky and gorgeous. It sounds natural to me. And the high end bites you. It pierces through the orchestra just like brass does. You've got to be a little bit careful when programming melodies with a module because in the upper third of the module range, as we enter these high dynamics, it ramps up quite drastically. 
everything's chill even until half it's still rather round and then now we're starting to get crazy it's nothing particularly good or bad for me it's just worth noting i think it's great to have such big dynamic range available we also have a few special articulations like ribs and wonderful sustained to flutter articulations check this out <laughs> You barely hear a cross rate from sustain to the flutter tongue technique, and it even has legato. In general, a flatus brass has tons of legatos. They're great, and it's a sign of quality for me. Now here's an important question. Do the articulations sound consistent? Can I play a melody, starting with legato, jumping into a staccato or staccatissimo note, and then going back to sustains and end on a strong marcato finish that then naturally rings out? <laughs> Yes, I think you can. I think it sounds good. I can seamlessly switch the articulations and can write convincing melody lines with that. One thing I noticed, and I think it's something that other folks have already complained about as well, is that there seems to be a lot of inconsistency in the volume of legato transitions. For the most part, you can play slow lines nicely and the notes flow from one into the other. It's great. But sometimes, for example, here or here, the note plays then triggers the legato transition, which is louder than the first note, and then it goes back to the second note at the original volume. Can you hear this? It's like a bump in the legato transition. The transition is louder than the first and the second note. I noticed this on some intervals, on some instruments, not on all. You could say it sticks out too much to call it a feature, but also you could say that it's not disruptive enough to call it a bug. I would call it a characteristic. I have two opinions here. First is that it can be a bit problematic if you really want to play a slow, soft and silky line. Then that bump takes away a bit of that subtlety that you want in your melody. On the other side, I also notice that sometimes it can be quite nice because it feels like the player sort of leans into the note by adding this extra dynamic to it. It can add like a little bit of energy to it. What do you think about it? Is it annoying or is it maybe part of a lively performance? Write it down in the comments. Personally, I don't mind it very much and you can also attenuate it a little bit by increasing the legato speed. I don't want to obsess about it. You can toggle the niente feature here, which means that at the lowest module position, the instruments actually stop playing and then, this is really cool, it adds room ambience from the hall. Let me ramp up the track a little bit. There you have it. You can attenuate it here if you want and you can also turn it off completely, but I think it's really cool. It's good that Strathoff adds these small things into the library that help make it must sound a bit more like the real thing. Same for the green key switch here, which is a breathing sample. You can hear the ensemble take a deep breath and then you can start to play. You don't have to use it, but you can, and I think it's great. Another cool thing is that you can turn off individual round robins in case there are some that you just don't like. Check this out. Performance patches. These are great. At first I didn't care. Then I loaded one and I was like, oh yes, this is amazing. <laughs> so every patch that has shorts and long notes both available has a performance patch, even the curated ensembles. In these performance patches, you can play long notes, legatos and short notes without switching any articulations. This is so cool. It supports the polyphonic legato as well. These patches are extremely valuable for sketching down ideas. Sometimes they're even so good that I wouldn't even bother switching them to the main patch. This is so useful. What do I think about a Flatus Brass? Does it fulfill my four expectations? One, little sampling's signature sound with lively performances and a great tone. Yep. Just like a flate of strings, there's something about this tone that feels so realistic to me. The way that they assembled those instrument combinations. Listen to this iceberg patch.
it's just good. The samples have life in them. They're not perfect. You can hear some pitch fluctuations, noise from the node attack, and the player blowing into the instruments, maybe. It's gorgeous, and personally, I like it. Two, I expected a truckload of awe-inspiring ensemble combinations. Yes, they deliver. They're great. You got both the epic range, that sounds almost like something you would expect from Orchestral Tools Metropolis arc, organic and huge without being overly processed, and you got the mellow stuff with mutes from the Mountain Hotel and Noabras. And then there's that weird space horror patch, which is just crazy. I'm glad they included a valuable patch for modern hybrid orchestra stuff as well, with that Phantom Brass, the Ten Horns patch. Very useful. The experimental patches then also add some interesting colors to Aflatus's palette. All I want is more. I can't get enough of it, and I think that's a sign of quality here. It's a pity that they didn't release Aflatus Brass with these sound design presets that we know from their other libraries. In my opinion, that would have been good if they had been included for release. They have a world-class sound designer, and the Aflatus 1 patches are some of the best I've heard for cinematic sound design. In any case, they promised to ship them with a free update later on. Okay, guess we'll have to wait. Three, I expected great playability. The polyphonic legato works flawlessly. The UI makes it easy to switch from mono legato, poly legato, or sustains. The performance patches make it easier than ever to sketch down ideas, and the articulations are recorded and programmed with good amount of consistency. Keep in mind that some of these legato transitions are a bit loud. If it's a feature, it would be cool if we could get some control over the volume. If it's a bug, maybe it can be tweaked in an update. I wish some special articulations like the rips and sustain to flutter, both sound amazing, would not be tucked away in the single instruments folder. I almost missed them. I wish they would be included in the multi-patches. I guess they didn't put them there because they're not available for every instrument and it would sacrifice consistency. Not sure. So keep in mind that there are a few more articulations in the single patches folder. Four, I expected a well-rounded, functioning bread and butter brass library. Aflatus Brass is a huge step in the right direction here. To me, it's consistent enough that you don't need to buy this and then also would need something like Cinematic Studio Brass or Tom Holtenbock Brass on top or any other brass library. You can, of course. We all love buying sample libraries, I guess, but you don't have to. Have I finally found the perfect brass library? Let's say it's getting there and maybe wait after future updates. It's obvious that Threads of Sampling put a lot of care into this library and they clearly implemented user feedback from Aflatus 1 where people wished that it would be a bit more consistent so they could use it as a general, their primary bread and butter library. I think you can do that with Aflatus Brass. We have all the instruments that we need, both in ensembles and solo versions, with mutes. The articulations are the same across instruments. The key switches are mostly the same where it makes sense and the articulations are consistent enough that you can switch between them smoothly inside a melody. Quality stuff here. Is Aflatus Brass worth buying for you? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. If you value these unique combination patches that give you sounds that are similar to iconic movie soundtracks that you know, then yes. Also, if you already have Aflatus 1 and like the approach, then yes. If you're on a tight budget and already have a good brass sample library, it might be a tough call to say if the extra patches and those mutes are worth Aflatus' high price for you. I can't wait to use it in my future compositions because this thing screams inspiration. I'm happy to help you if you have any questions about Aflatus Brass. Just drop them down in the comments and I will reply. Join the Become a Pro Composer Discord community to connect further with us. We got hundreds of fellow composers who learn, share and get good together. We're also having an absolute blast with our community composing games. And we managed to write a full 90 minute video game soundtrack in under two weeks. That speaks volumes about this community. I wrote a little demo with Aflatus 2. It's Aflatus 2 only. It doesn't have any mixing, I didn't put any EQ, only my mastering chain and some Berlin Studio reverb. Drop your questions about the library down in the comments and I'll see you soon.